Hello, this is Gary at Jack Raven Bushcraft. Thank you for watching our video. Uh, this week I'm going to talk about Western Red Cedar. I don't often talk about conifers, um, largely that's because we are based in a, a native um, broadleaf ancient woodland. We don't have any conifers in fact in our woodland at all. Uh, today I've taken a walk about 10-15 minutes away um, to a, another woodland. Uh, some of you, if you've been on any of our longer duration courses, you might recognise um, where I'm stood. We do often come here on those longer courses to to look in more detail into various tinders and so on. And we also we come down to this area. Uh, we've got two different species of um, conifer here. In fact, so western red cedar right next to me, and then just to the left and behind me we also have some scots pine um, i may do a, another video at some point in the future around scots pine well as i say guys today about western red cedar so it is not a native species um, to the british isles it's an imported conifer it's one of the species that was introduced to um, allow us to grow timber quickly so basically after the second world war when all of our timber crops were at a at a, a low point we brought in various quick uh, quick growing conifer species and um, western red cedar was one of those species so whilst it's not native uh you do find it around it is not uncommon at all so it, it, where does it come from it comes from north america the west coast of north america Somewhat confusingly, Western Red Cedar isn't a cedar. Uh, so, in fact, to the best of my knowledge, there are no members of the cedrus um, family in North America. The things that we are calling cedar are, in fact, in the cypress family. Somewhat confusing, um, but that is my understanding of it. That, that Western Red Cedar, not a cedar, it's a cypress. It was a sacred tree to Native Americans um, so Native Americans would use this to to make their totem pole the the leaves on it and I'm going to get a little close-up of the the leaves for you as well so you can take a look at that here's a close-up of the leaves on the western red cedar as you can see they are they're quite a, a vibrant green um, they're also flat the leaves on it are if you just kind of take a few and crush them up and smell them they are absolutely wonderful it's a very citrusy um, very pleasant citrusy smell coming from this and so Native Americans would lay this on the floor in the sweat lodge and then put the hot rocks on top of it and tip water over it so it's, I've done and I have done this um, once not not in um, North America in, in fact in Sussex um, and it was a very very enjoyable experience it's a bit like being in a in a radox bath with all of that lovely steam um, that lovely citrusy scented steam so totem poles um, and in the in the sweat lodge but it also has um, some other uses for us in bushcraft so the bark uh, we can use the bark to make um, folded bark containers uh, and I have done this on a, a couple of occasions. We can also get a very, very usable inner bark from Western Red Cedar which we can then use as a tinder. And in my experience it makes a, a particularly good tinder and again I will kind of get a, another shot shortly of what that inner bark looks like so you can see that in a in a little bit more detail so there's the outer bark and if I just flip it around let's see here there's the inner bark and by scraping those inner fibers away then I end up with 
this really really fibrous material it works particularly well in a, a tinder bundle um, it will also go up with um, a fire steel so aside from the bark being useful to us in bushcraft the wood itself is also useful to us so we can use the um, the wood from western red cedar in bow drilling and so I've used the, the wood to make both the, the hearth board and the spindle, so the, the making both pieces from the, the same piece of wood. Um, I would put it as around a, a, a starting to get quite, um, starting to get tricky uh, on, a, on a kind of scale of easy to, to difficult. I'd put it sort of midway on there. So it wouldn't be a wood that I would start somebody off with as a complete novice it would be something to aspire to something to, to, to work towards to build your skill set up towards being able to accomplish we often have discussions on um, on courses especially when we're talking about um, bow drilling and when we're talking about just processing firewood up around hardwoods and softwoods so people have this kind of assumption that a conifer is a softwood and a, a broadleaf tree is a hardwood. In fact, the terms are often used interchangeable, interchangeably. People will often talk about softwood and exclusively meaning um, the timber from a conifer. Western red cedar, in my experience, is actually pretty dense. Um, and in fact, I have sort of taken an axe to to western red cedar so i've had it on a stump taken an axe given it a, a split and well frankly it hasn't split so it can be really dense and so these terms of hardwood and softwood i try to avoid um, because they don't always kind of stack up in the in the real world so just to recap on this one guys western red cedar non-native conifer species um, we've got the, the the leaves here that we can use as a, in a in a sweat lodge outer bark that we can use to make folded bark containers inner bark that we can use um, as a tinder and we've got the wood itself that we can use for a bow drill so I hope you found that to be of interest guys uh, and useful to you in your own bushcraft adventures um, i will endeavor to get some more content out next week uh, make sure you don't miss out you can subscribe either to our youtube channel or our blog either of which are jack raven bushcraft uh, in the meantime take care stay safe <laughs>